final game of the Big 12 regular season. First Big 12 meeting between BYU and number three Texas. Lots of play for in this one. The conference seating has already been determined in terms of OU winning the regular season title by virtue of a win Wednesday night. Norman over Texas, but Texas trying to hold on to that two seed line and keep that resume strong. Tyler Denny, Andrea Lloyd, Lots to look forward to tonight. Some great storylines intertwined between these two teams. Yeah, absolutely. Texas coming off that tough loss at OU. They are fueled. And Booker with this good start. We have seen her do that all year long. At the point guard position, she is deadly with that jump shot. Starting five for BYU, Amari Whiting, Billy Wilson, Kaylee Smiler, Lauren Gustin, number 12. That's the one you're going to want to watch. Rose Bubakar in there as well. Lauren Gustin leads the NCAA. Rebounds per game. Double doubles with 28. Big night as well. Senior night. Shaylee Gonzalez for Texas. Began her career at BYU. A teammate of Gustin in high school at BYU as well. Booker began the scoring for Texas. The phenomenal freshman. Very much in play for National Freshman of the Year, Big 12 Player of the Year. Shot clock at two. Taylor Jones rebounds for Texas into Jones in the post. Pull up and transition is good. And that's what you will see from BYU. They like to push pace. And really a fantastic story. She is Amber Whiting as the head coach comes in with only high school experience at the Division I level. She's done a terrific job in her first two seasons. Off the glass of foul. Just past the century mark with 102 wins. I thought you were going to say the century mark with his birthday today, but no. <laughs> no not the century <laughs> It mark. is his birthday, so happy birthday to Vic Schaefer today. He's cutting cake outside with yep. the students in between a busy day. Here at Moody with the men playing earlier, victorious over Oklahoma State. Great back cut. Good finish off the glass. That's what you have to do against pressure. Scoring drought of two and a half minutes. Well, neither team shooting well. BYU two for seven. Texas with the turnover. Straight on three is good. You have to like their aggressiveness, though, and their intensity coming into this game. Booker pushes the defender off and pulls up with the mid-range. Booker 16.4 points per game. Mistake. Texas duo of defenders there. She was the All-American point guard for Texas, and there was nobody standing in line except for Madison Booker to say, hey, I'm willing to play point guard. Booker had played point guard a little bit in high school, played backup point guard as well for Vic Schaefer and she just took the reins of this team and carried them on the back her, her back I think for that first month as they were adjusting to life after Rory Harmon. Wilson the 85% free throw shooter gets both to go down BYU a 10-6 advantage Gonzalez Gaston Holly Muhammad and Booker the five on the floor D Gaston with the second chance and the chance for three the hard way just finding her groove here in the last few games. Averaging 18 minutes per game, 8.5 points, 3.8 rebounds. Be a huge part of that for Texas's success today. Moving forward. BYU now the scoring drought field goals. None for the last 246. Good move by Gustin to get herself space on the baseline. Yeah, that was just a really nice set play by BYU. A terrific screen and read. You certainly want to get Lauren Gustin some looks. They're back in that 1-3-1 one, one zone. She's averaging 17.2 point, points to go with those 15.4 rebounds. Booker will go to the line. Booker 6-1. She's been challenged. Vic has challenged her in the last two weeks to be more aggressive at the offensive end. BYU opportunity for the final shot of the first quarter that has, could be a baseball score. Muhammad out defending. A take by Whiting will earn the whistle. And she also committed to playing at, I believe, Oregon 
coming out of high school and then decided when her mom got the job at BYU that she wanted to play for her mom. I think probably both of them were happy. Amber Whiting was concerned about what she was going to do without having Amari in the house and coaching her. Doesn't call her mom, though, in this environment. We either call her Amber, call her coach, or Coach Whiting. She nails both from the line. BYU perfect from the strike. Booker will get a heave to end the quarter. Pulls up. Good. They will look at it, but Madison Booker quick down and the frame of mind to make the jumper to send it to the break. 14 off. Texas fabulous freshman pulls up. That's good. Happy birthday, Coach Vic Schaefer, outside the Moody, in between the men's game and the women's game tonight, serving some birthday cake for the students that are pulling off the double header. Dylan DeSue, Texas's men's star, was out there, but Coach Vic Schaefer has came in, and there's a standard, Andrea, you played here at Texas, and he has helped reestablish that standard for Texas, one of the premier programs in the country. Well, he has just done such a terrific job. You look just in four years at his winning percentage, Big 12 titles, Elite Eights, and the 13 seasons before with Gaston Course and Aston, who had successful teams in the top 25, did very, very well. The Dick Schaefer has found an edge and put an edge back on this Texas team once again. See, the two Big 12 titles, and if I know Vic Schaefer, I'm sure that game uh, by... Kansas State could be in play with the Texas loss. They would then shift into the two. We will break all that down for you at halftime. Talk about the opening quarter. What did you see? Uh, Madison Booker was terrific on Texas's end. Four of six from the field. The rest of the team won for eight. And for BYU, they came out with a vengeance. And Booker continues to score. But they have had really good play from their guards, from their bench. We talked earlier about Booker finding a different level, but I think there's an even another level for her, which is when her team needs her to score and take over, it's taking that initiative. We were here for the Texas Tech game. There were some lulls there scoring-wise as Dustin responds on the other end, but the assertiveness for Booker to watch. Texas and Holly moving the ball around. Gaston rebounds and the second chance points for D. Gaston. Justin met by Gonzalez, fighting for the rebound, ends up in the arms of Holly. Booker controls for Texas. Madison Booker will go to the strike. They have made the most. The fans have shown up. The student engagement is really impressive, too. Absolutely. It's the students, I think, that have really made the difference for Texas. And it started about a month ago. And a lot of students on campus challenged other students to support their women's team that was basically in the top 10 all year long and as high as what did they get up to number three in the in the rankings at one point for Texas and there's just a different level of volume in here with the students and in and excitement sign said let Booker cook and that mm -hmm. is what Madison Booker has done <laughs> for this Texas team as good of a freshman campaign as we have seen Gaston fighting, finishing. Holston pulls up and vast. Texas a little frantic on that break off the make. Well, BYU needed that basket right there. It's a third made three on six attempts for BYU. It's really felt the energy. Moving towards the burnt orange. Booker on the turnaround will go to the line again. Two-time USA Basketball Writers Association National Freshman of the Week. National Player of the Week as well. There is Kaylee Smiley, the senior from New Zealand. And what a story for her of toughness earlier this season. Had taken an elbow to the head, had a two-inch laceration. She got eight staples and then returned to the game. Now, this is a young lady that also almost lost her life in a wakeboarding accident in 2019. Has a huge scar on her leg. She is a tough cookie. Handling the ball right now. 
She's Maori from New Zealand, takes a lot of pride in her Maori culture. It's a shot clock at one. Gustin unawares. Shot clock violation. So Booker gets the breather. So Leah Moore will send her to the other side. It's a flash screen for Moore. It's a nice set that Texas ran. Yeah, just against his own right there. It has been a while for the Cougars to hit a basket. There's a good open look. Back iron. The foul will be on definitely. the floor on the rebound going over the back. And that'll be her third foul. So oh, she'll third, take a seat me. on the bench. Not unusual to see Whiting out there on the floor with two fouls. It was Whiting that popped in. We were FaceTiming with, well, Zoom, excuse me, with <laughs> Coach Amber Whiting with Mom. <laughs> and then Amori came over, and Mom Amber, also the head coach, said freshman. She didn't say, oh, my daughter. <laughs> yeah. He shows you that interesting dynamic, but great energy between the two. But she's an important piece to run this offense for BYU, well, sitting the, on the bench. The freshmen are an important piece of BYU, and they are goofy, but they are talented. Booker doesn't do this a ton. Shoot the three. Booker, just a 28% three-point. Shooter buries it from deep. Texas continues to build on their biggest lead. He's still doing a lot of things out there except scoring. It's been great for Texas's defense. It's Texas's defense, five minutes and 30 seconds. The scoring drop for BYU. That ball tipped out. And he five with the defense. Booker back the other way. Trying to find more in the post. It was Calvert. Texas will get a breather for Madison Booker as well. There's some extended halftime break. Well, 17 points already for Madison Booker. ESPN recently came out with their top 25 players and she was in the top 15. Rightfully so. A new arrival to the top 25. You remember Rory Harmon was in the top 10 at one point earlier this season before her injury. Six turnovers over their last seven times down to their offensive side. Well, this is the advantage Texas has with this depth. They can rotate post players in and out and in and out. Shay Holly at the guard can go forever. Texas had a foul to give. Well, with the Big 12 tournament, uh, you know, coming up and obviously NCAA play coming up, it's such an advantage to have depth. Texas has that. OU has depth as well. And a couple of other teams in uh, the Big 12. That was the fifth that put BYU in the bonus. Why Kaylee Smiler is at the line. 75% free throw shooter misses both. So the drought continues. BYU has been stuck on 19. About two and a half between shot and game. Wolston, the leading scorer for BYU with eight, pulls up from deep. That was pretty. Great job. Great recognition by Wolston, and we're going to go to half. That was a big three-point make to wrestle a little momentum and not feel as if they were out on this one. They had just eight points in that second quarter. Would have had five if it were not for that heave that was from deep as Wolston handles. Same starting five. Wolston, Smiler, Gustin, Bubakar, and Davenport for BYU. Texas, Gonzalez, Holly, Moore, Booker, and Jones. Haven't seen a ton from, from Jones. Just five minutes. Texas is big on the defense there right in their face. Gustin with the make. Gustin now three of eight from the field. Yeah, six points. A little quiet in the first half, I think, offensively. It's really helpful when Lauren can get involved at the offensive end for BYU. Four points in that first half. Mm. Jones missing both. Texas 70.5 from the line as a team, but Justin trying to work with Whiting. Corner three glances the rim more. Collects Booker trying to go quick for Texas. 
back it out and set up the offense. It's the transition defense right there. Can Texas find something for Shaylee Gonzalez playing here senior night against her former university? More. Good. One more with seven apiece. Shot clock once again under 10. Jones with the swipe. Gonzalez, Texas. Back the other way, three on three. Gonzalez with the find. Moore will go to the line with the hard contact, reaching for that left ankle. We know about the left knee. You see the, the big brace. Nice look on the inside right there. You'll just see nice pass. Moore just falls a little bit awkwardly. Talks with opposing coaches and also her own coaches at BYU about what to do in town, where to stay. She likes to go for runs. We'll have to ask her if she woke up and ran out of town lake. Well, it's interesting. We haven't even talked about the fact that this is the big, the last Big 12 regular season game for uh, Texas. As they'll be moving to the SEC next year as well. Yeah, volleyball played an exhibition earlier this week, and I don't know if you saw they unveiled the new court as Booker swipes the turnover is good with the make. Swagger's back, and she will shoot the end one. Times you see the evolution of a freshman, and I think today you're even seeing Madison Booker take things up another notch, making things happen defensively. She's got those huge hands, great timing. You see the emotion she's playing with today. That's something we haven't seen yet from Madison Booker. Texas, maybe they were in fifth gear defensively, have now gone into sixth. And BYU really needs to find an answer right now. They need to execute, find some ways to score. 8-0 run for Texas. This their largest lead. Over two minutes of scoring. Drought BYU once again. A broken record over here. Shot clock under 10. How many shots have they had under two seconds? Just a heave from Whiting. It's another shot clock violation. Texas will take the ball out of bounds. Gonzalez still over. He shot the ball six times. Smiler hedges out, but Booker with the fine Jones to the line. And I think you have to remember, I mean, you see something different from Booker today. There's a spark in Booker that we haven't seen. And I have to remember that for the last month or two, she's been drinking from a fire hose, trying to learn that point guard position. And I think she's Finally starting to feel comfortable. Things are sifting in out of the frontal lobe into the back part of the brain. And Booker with 20 points. That surprisingly was just her first assist as Jones converted the three-point play. Great play by Gonzalez. Falling out of bounds to find Jones who finishes on the break. Whiting will fly at the Texas crowd as she'll shoot free throws, but how about this hustle for Gonzalez? Many ways you can influence the game. It helps so much when Booker can be a rebounder. She gets the ball down the floor and court awareness by Shaley Gonzalez. She has always been really, really good at transition. She's usually the one that benefits by scoring, this time finding her teammate. Jones with a good stint as she will sit down. Gonzalez. Their fourth assist is Whiting to the line, 61% from the strike. A lot of noise. Yeah. BYU, Texas maybe lucked out scheduling-wise, not having to go to Provo. That is always one of the best environments to play in, but Texas is quickly finding one of the best environments in the game. Booker with the fine more double pump in the finish. 28 to eight run for the third ranked Longhorns. Back the other way quickly for Wolston. Yeah, Wilson needs to not pick her dribble up right there. Backdoor cut to Whiting. 
will find Dustin. That stops the 15-0 run. Regular season finality for Texas in the Big 12. The inbound play as Texas has developed now a 20-point lead. This environment is great as we've ever taken part of for a women's game here on LHN. That <laughs> yeah, was a really good third quarter thus far for Moore. Seven points. You know, hustle and body to the floor. Gaston on Gustin. Gustin with the spin. Finishes with the left. Texas has done a really good job keeping her quiet. She has 11 rebounds. That's beneath her season average. She has eight points. Now 10 beneath her season average of 17 as well. Well, Lauren Gustin had 11 rebounds at the half, so has not been on the boards here in the second half. Holly for three. Gonzalez throws it up for Gaston, collects and finishes. Nice job by Lauren Gustin, sticking with it right there. Gaston rebounds her fourth. Moore gets the friendly roll. And she is limping after that play. She has taken a couple of hits on the inside. BYU. Trying to find something, Gustin go to the right this time and does get it. I like the composure that Gustin has on the interior. And BYU, despite the score right now, have been patient offensively. Team high now 12 points for Gustin to go with her 12 rebounds. That 12th rebound put her into fourth on the career NCAA rebound list. Booker. Muhammad with the follow. Mina Muhammad, she is so athletic. BYU can try to close out the quarter. The one that has been all Texas. <laughs> Gustin places one in. It has been intense and physical out here, and Texas set the tone early, I think, with their defense. But I have to tell you, BYU struggled to score, but they have matched the intensity of this game. BYU needs some people to get involved offensively. Gustin had 10 points in that third quarter. Her teammates had no points. Yeah, Gustin now with 14 and 12, but Texas has not let anyone else do much. Gonzalez still looking for her, her first points, 0 of 7. As Jones turns to the shoulder, but can't get it. Gustin snags. It's got to be, we're getting, I think, close to 1,500 career rebounds. Was 12 away coming into this for fourth on the all-time list already, the program career all-time leader. Shoulder will earn some free throws. Interesting to see is Wilson actually will be going on uh, taking a mission uh, leave, so she'll be gone for the next two years from this team will come back for her junior and senior season, but her, her, the next seasons, the next three seasons, I guess. I can count. I really can. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, rare on the women's side that uh, the women's players take those two-year mission opportunities, but uh, certainly Wollston is excited about it. And BYU will have to figure out how to fill her shoes. Jones! And Texas has a slew of inside players. 18 paint points in the third quarter. Add a couple more here in the fourth quarter, but he has so many different choices on who he can play at the four and five position. Jones is one of them, but he has to figure out how he's going to split that time up. Is that a gift and a curse sometimes? Absolutely. Because you don't have continuity? It, you know, I think it's just a it's just a choice. You get uh, you have an opportunity to play whoever's playing best to match up differently. You can put Muhammad out there when you need somebody to, to defend a more agile player. 
just matchups. Good find inside. Calvert doing the work. Plenty to play for for this Texas team. Number three in the rankings, four in the net. The metrics love Texas. Showing you the projections from our bracketologist, Charlie Cream. Is another for Jones down deep in the post. The Pac-12, as we see Lauren Gustin take it inside with that left hand and hook she's so good at. Cannot believe that the Pac-12 will is dismantling yeah. next year, cool. conference realignment. You heard from Shaylee Gonzalez. She said, I never thought in a million years that I would be playing BYU, my former school, especially as a Big 12 conference opponent, that a Pac-12 that will now be a Pac-2. Jones with the left. Jones, this is what? Fourth opportunity for an N one for Jones? Yeah. And again, Texas working extremely hard. Continue to post hard. This is something I like to see from Taylor Jones. Don't give up that position. You've got good low position. But you talk about conference late realignment to continue that. How exciting is it going to be for BYU and Utah to be in the Big 12 together and to rekindle that rivalry? I was part of that rivalry. And it's, aren't we blessed to be able to sit courtside and do this job? I love the game of hoops as you do, and it was 10 years ago that Pat Lowry, who I have to start with by saying thank you to her, so many of us in these chairs because of her giving an opportunity, she said, hey, do you want to do sideline for a basketball game? I said, sure. Never done sideline before, and my, my story with that, I pitched a story of doing a hit from the student section. Student section was rocking. I did my hit. I was super excited, and then I was supposed to interview Rick Barnes on the walk-off. I was in the wrong position, and I missed oh, the no. interview. <laughs> so, got to start with Pat. Thank you to Pat. Stephanie Drooley, Dave Brown, those are two names that helped launch this network and go into a landscape. That James Davidson, Heather Wilson, Steve White. People feature-wise, as there's action going on here, but these people, their names haven't been said, and the things that you have seen over these years, they have helped contribute. Jessica Maddox, Michael Holmes, Brooke Miller, our directors, Brad Sheldon, who's in the chair tonight, Chris Olmeyer, Graphics and Bugs, Eric Weiss, Don Davis, April Smith, Sherry Ahrens, in audio, Andy Benz, who makes us sound good. He's in there tonight. State College, Steve. Texas looks as if they will cement themselves, if they can wrap this up, on that two-seed line for the Big 12 tournament starting next week on Thursday. Well, you know, while you were thanking everyone, I think what we saw on the floor was more of the same. I was asking you about a Texas report card. If you were to evaluate this team, we know the good. We've talked about the defense. We've talked about the versatility. We've seen Madison Booker, what she brings. What's the biggest question mark for Texas and their potential tournament success? I think guard depth that, that could come into play for Texas. That with three guards that they play primarily, Shaley Gonzalez, Shea Holly, and Madison Booker, uh, he has, they have to play on the floor. They have to see a lot of playing time for Texas over the course of the the Big 12 tournament and the NCAA tournament. And I also think Texas has some kryptonite. They struggle against certain styles of teams, styles like Oklahoma, wide open floor, read and react teams, teams that like to push. Those are my two things. For Texas, obviously, through the Big 12 tournament and then onto the NCAA tournament, what is the potential? They are one in four, I believe, in one possession games this season. And being able to close out a game is so critical uh, during the NCAA tournament. Of people when they saw Glory Holman go down was, uh, well, you know, Texas is going to miss a season here opportunity-wise. They did not. Credit to this group. Credit to the coaching staff as Texas went on a major run. The Longhorns now sitting at... 26 and 4, but the loss to Baylor, then the two losses against Oklahoma, and the loss against Kansas State. Texas, plenty of pieces. And now with the calendar turned to March, and after this, Texas will play in must-win games. But then here in the second half, it's been all about the post. And I think Madison Booker is fine with that. She just wants her team to play well and to win. That's what was needed. The last piece, senior night, Gonzalez gets one from three. Shaley Gonzalez on a one for eight night. 
she can remember that corner three. Just keep shooting. That's what you do as a scorer. And, you know, Shaley Gonzalez has contributed so much other than her scoring here today. But the roof bout came off when she hit that one. No, she, she didn't know that she had been taken out. <laughs> I'm sure that is a bittersweet uh, thing to look at if you're a BYU fan. BYU loved having Shaley Gonzalez as part of the program, really wanted her to continue to stay. She chose to come here and play at Texas. 155 or 56 game, games. Texas, 75. Out as well. A hug from Coach Schaefer. And Khadija Fai started her career at Texas Tech. Came in and just killed Texas on the board in a win that Texas Tech here had had here at uh, in Vic Schaefer's second year and he said when she was in the transfer portal I needed to go after her we needed a rebounder like that ended up coming Vic to likes this. rebounders oh he does he, he does he and likes players that can play his brand of basketball which is physicality down low and fighting for the ball as Madison Booker she she's not a senior but he will sit down Shea Holly will as well as Texas can celebrate. And if, if I would have told you after Rory Harmon goes down, that's obviously a big part of the narrative for Texas that they would go 14 and 4 in Big 12 play. Would you have expected it? No, I would not have expected. I wouldn't expected this team to fold because Vic Schaefer would have drugged them along, and he has at times drugged this team along to have the intensity uh, that they need to compete at this level. But again, you look at Booker and what she's been able to do and. The absence of Rory Harmon and just how this team has really come together here. I think this is the most complete game I've seen Texas play all year. It's a good way to close out the regular season. And before this game is over, I just have to commend BYU. They came in here and made this exciting today. And the score wasn't close uh, after the first half, really. But Amber Whiting did a heck of a job with their team to compete. I love what she said to us, too. We asked her about goals for this season, how she, she wanted to close out. She said, well, we were picked to finish 11th. Right now, they're in a tie for ninth. So the barometer coming into a new conference with a young team with freshman was, can we do better than the expectations? And I have to say that they hit their mark. So Texas will set their sights on the postseason. It starts with the trip to Kansas City. That begins next Thursday, the tournament in an expanded format. Texas will get the double by Longhorns now locked into the two seed in the Big 12 tournament. And they were locked in to the game today, locked into the game plan.